Hello and welcome back. Today we are talking about the Hilbert Huang transform, which um, describes the application of the Hilbert transform to the intrinsic mode functions resulting from an empirical mode decomposition. And I will show you why this approach is more successful in providing a meaningful Hilbert spectrum for most applications. Let's briefly review the key aspects of the Hilbert transform and the Hilbert spectrum. The main objective of the Hilbert transform is the calculation of an analytic signal from real valued data to determine instantaneous properties of the data. The real part of the complex analytic signal is the original real valued data f of t and the Hilbert transform provides the imaginary part. When we express the complex signal in polar coordinates, we can extract the amplitude a and the phase phi of the signal. Both are time-dependent quantities, which is why they are called instantaneous properties. To calculate the Hilbert spectrum, we need the instantaneous energy and the instantaneous frequency. We obtain the energy by squaring the amplitude and the frequency as the temporal derivative of the phase. In combination with the time steps, we can then display the Hilbert spectrum. The discrete Hilbert transform, so the Hilbert transform of discrete data points instead of a continuous signal, is based on the discrete Fourier transform. We exploit the fact that the Fourier transform data contains exactly the same information as the original data, but due to the transformation into the frequency domain, the data is complex. And by preserving the complex property during the inverse Fourier transform, so the transformation back into the temporal domain, we generate a complex signal with the same information as the original real valued data. And how is this done? So after Fourier transforming the data, we set all Fourier coefficients that are related to negative frequencies to zero. Since the negative frequencies serve the purpose of eliminating imaginary components during the transformation back into the temporal domain, their removal allows us to preserve the imaginary parts related to the positive frequencies. And we also have to double the amplitudes related to the positive frequencies for energy conservation. Then we perform the inverse Fourier transform and end up with an analytic signal that contains exactly the same information as the real valued data we started with. If this was too fast, please watch my previous video on the Hilbert transform and the Hilbert spectrum, where I explain the whole magic behind the Hilbert transform in detail and then come back to this point. Now that we have reviewed the Hilbert transform, Let's see why the Hilbert Huang transform is a very useful extension of the classical Hilbert transform. It basically performs an empirical mode decomposition prior to the Hilbert transform. Thus, the Hilbert transform is applied to each intrinsic mode function individually, and the Hilbert spectrum is built by adding up all individual spectra. And if you are like, hey, what is an empirical mode decomposition? Uh, check out my video about this awesome decomposition method. Otherwise, let's take some exemplary data to visualize the advantage of this approach. Our data is a combination of two sine waves, one with 5 Hz and one with 20 Hz. The amplitude of the low frequency sine is 0.7 and the higher frequency wave is scaled by 1. The data is sampled at 200 Hz and you see the continuous as well as the discrete data points in the figure. The figure only shows an extract, but in total, our time span measures 5 seconds. If we apply the Hilbert transform to the discrete data points and plot the Hilbert spectrum, we get this result. And you see, this is not very helpful. Instead of telling us that the data contains two distinct frequencies, 5 Hz and 20 Hz, that are continuously present in the data, it gives us an ambitious but kind of periodic spectrum with peak values around 15 Hz that are smeared out to higher frequencies. If we didn't use synthetic data from which we know the exact frequency content, we would most probably misinterpret the Hilbert spectrum. 
But if we apply the empirical mode decomposition to the discrete data points and subsequently calculate the Hilbert spectrum, we obtain this result. Now we clearly see that 5 Hz and 20 Hz are continuously present in the data. And in addition, we can also deduce the correct energy values, so the squares of the amplitudes that scale the respective sine waves. We only have some irregularities near the boundaries, but they could be reduced with more advanced versions of the classical EMD. But why is the Hilbert spectrum so much clearer when we first perform an EMD? This mainly arises from two issues, the first related to the definition of the instantaneous frequency and the second related to substantial limitations of the Fourier transform. We defined the instantaneous frequency as the temporal derivative of the phase and we expect the frequency to be a single value function of time, which means that we have only one frequency value at each time step. This implies that the data from which we derive the instantaneous frequency is monocomponent or at least narrowband data. If the data contains several components, so a broad range of scales, it is very likely that we have more than a single frequency value at each time instant. And then the definition of the instantaneous frequency is not unique and thus the Hilbert spectrum is inconclusive. It is difficult to find a clear definition of the narrowband property, but there's some consensus involving a global and a local requirement. The global condition states that the data has to have an equal number of extrema and zero crossings, while a local symmetry to the zero level must additionally exist. And maybe you remember that both conditions are involved in the definition of the intrinsic mode functions obtained by an EMD. So the EMD is the ideal method to pre-process the data and de decompose it into components that fulfill the requirements to calculate meaningful instantaneous frequencies. So we apply the Hilbert transform to each mode, determine the instantaneous energy and frequency of each mode and combine the quantities of all modes to a single Hilbert spectrum. You might wonder why we cannot use the Fourier transform for this pre-processing, since the Fourier transform also provides a data decomposition into monocomponent elements, which are sines and cosines. The main issue with this approach is that the Fourier transform only provides physically meaningful components if the data are linear and stationary, or strictly periodic. If the data is unsteady, so the data is not uniformly distributed along the considered time span, as you can see here for the blue curve, the Fourier transform must introduce additional harmonics to represent this unsteadiness. And the same happens for nonlinear data, in which the nonlinearity creates deformed wave profiles such as the green curve. Due to energy conservation that is mathematically prescribed in the Fourier transform, the total energy contained in the original data is spread across all frequencies, so also across the additional spurious harmonics. This means that there is not enough energy left for the physically correct frequencies and they cannot be assigned to their correct energy content. Consequently, the Hilbert spectrum would deviate from a physically meaningful representation of the data's energy and frequency content. Please note that we do not face this issue when we apply the Fourier transform within the framework of the Hilbert transform. This issue only exists in the frequency domain and when we consider individual frequencies, not when we consider the data as a whole. So for the Hilbert transform, we do not care about the individual components and their values in the frequency domain. Since we transform the data back into the temporal domain, we recover our properties of the original data and any non-physicality is compensated. Let's get back to our example from the beginning. If we apply the EMD to this data, we basically obtain two intrinsic mode functions. IMF1 contains the frequency and the amplitude of the high frequency wave with 20 Hz and IMF2 represents the sine wave with 5 Hz and an amplitude of 0.7. When we apply the Hilbert transform to each mode individually, 
The Hilbert spectrum of IMF1 provides the upper part of the complete spectrum and the Hilbert transform of IMF2 the lower part of the spectrum. We just add both spectra together and get the spectrum you see in this figure. And as we already analyzed, we clearly see that both frequencies and the respective energy values match the original data. Since this example is quite boring, um, because the frequencies do not change over time, let's take a look at an example from the real world. Here we have the audio data from a blue whale and his song has four very distinct features. To extract the frequency and energy content of these features, we first apply an EMD to the audio data and subsequently a Hilbert transform. The resulting Hilbert spectrum which combines the individual spectra of all modes, looks like this. We can see that the first feature has a much higher frequency content than the three succeeding features. These three sound patches have a very similar frequency content, but the energy decreases. And we can also clearly locate the time instance at which each feature appears and how long it lasts. I hope this video conveyed the benefits of the Hilbert Wang transform, so the data pre-processing by an EMD, to obtain a meaningful Hilbert spectrum. And if there are open questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye!